everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I will be doing a very interesting video and it's a concept I came up with yesterday. Um, I'm going to do a day in the life video of a Discog seller such as myself. So a little bit of story behind my business. It's called Mubu Records and we only started selling uh, a few months ago and it's been doing well in recent months especially around Christmas time because a lot of people were buying gifts so obviously vinyls become a big thing so obviously people were buying records and we don't sell too many new albums we sell a lot of like near mints we sell them at good prices so that people can buy them they don't have to spend a lot of money on a brand new record they can have something that's probably just as good but has just been unsealed um, so I'm going to show you today my process of how I go about packaging albums, sending them off, all that kind of stuff. So it's probably not going to be too long of a video. I can't really make a long video today because of my plans of the day. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So someone recently bought an album from us. I think it was one of my viewers actually. And it was The Works by Queen. Let me show you my pressing. Here is the album that I sold yesterday and it's I'd say very good plus near mint sleeve uh, it's clearly an old copy when I lock my albums into the store I always play them before I lock them just in case there's something wrong with it because on the outside the disc might just look fine but it might have some internal damage so I make sure I play it before I put it up for sale and I'm very very critical so if something even has a little jump in it I will put it as very good plus purely because I don't want to pass it as something that it's not, if that makes sense. So, very critical on the sleeves as well. So even if it's got, you know, a bit of shading at the top or if it's bent a little bit, I'd still put it as very good plus. Um, and it works, really, because a lot of people are happy with the products. So let me show you how I package them. So what I do is I take the album out of these kind of protective sleeves and I'll put them into one of these sleeves. Now. The reason that I choose these ones over these ones is because these seal at the top so the, the album doesn't come out. So that line there, that peels off and it's like an adhesive and you just put it through like that and it keeps the album safe. Whereas this one it's quite hard to put in a parcel because it'll slip around and obviously there's a price sticker on this one so I don't want to compensate the album and I want a very happy customer. Hello, this is a new angle, so I'm going to show you now. So I will get the album, slip it in the sleeve like so, and before I seal it, I add my own little personal touch. I made a bunch of these thank you notes for, uh, via Photoshop because I thought they'd be nice to add a little personal touch to, to the purchase. And then, as I said, this bit here, you just Oops. It just peels off like that, and then it sticks down like so, and we have a nice sealed album. And I've got my yellow submarine socks on today, actually. I got those for Christmas this year. So, as for packaging itself. So I always make sure that if I'm buying albums from Discogs, I reuse as much of the cardboard as possible. But a lot of the time I can't reuse them because the seller will write our address in pen big on the front, which is fair enough. So it means that I can't reuse it. But these are the best ones to have. Um, and it will still have an address on the front. So usually I will take over the address before... I put the new address on the top. As you can see, taped over so that I can stick the new address on the top. I will put a layer of cardboard in here just to protect the album itself from you know, any sort of damage that it might get in the postal system. So, as I said, I use brown tape on the front to cover it up the address, but then I'll use fragile tape to seal the album together. 
So now the album is sealed. I'm gonna go onto Discogs, print out the address. So this was the original listing here, 20 pounds. And because this person lives in the States, the shipping is not gonna be three pounds 70. It's probably gonna be in the 20s somewhere. So to keep the privacy, obvious, I'm not gonna expose this person's address, but I type in the address onto Google Docs here and I use the Korean new font and I make the font as big as I can and then to add a little personal touch I put the logo and that will go right here on the box and my printer takes forever to print out stuff it's very very annoying it always says the printer is offline but it's not it's on and it's I think it's just a MacBook thing you know, MacBooks are just annoying but they are quite useful look at that yeah, look, this is my second wall, by the way. This is the wall that you... So I film over here, my phone's usually there. This is the wall that get, does not get seen. And probably my favourite wall, actually. It's got some great photos on it. I um, know a tiny little cut of Neil Pitt just on my light switch there. Right there. No reason. Just a spot of good luck. This is post-production Neve talking to you about something I did miss out where I store all the albums that I'm gonna sell and where I store all my packing stuff. Let me show you. We got these shelves uh, designed for vinyl storage, these little cubes, and all the albums, these are all the albums that are up for sale, and those are all our um, reusable boxes um, from albums that we've bought, and you know, pieces of cardboard, and bubble wrap and uh, paper, if necessary, although, this has kind of got a lot of junk in it now. I've got the tape in there and pens, all the different cards, well, they're all the same. These are all my thank you notes. That is the deceased seller tape that needs to be refilled. So my printer actually decided to um, print, so it's fun. Then obviously, scissors I'm cutting out the address and as I said I print off a little copy of our logo to put on the front of the record on the front of the box and then I'll take my see-through tape and what I usually do is I cover all the text with tape just as a precaution for water damage I have run out of tape. I'm gonna have to use packing tape. That's not sticky. So the, to the person who's getting this, I'm very sorry, but I can't use my um, see-through tape. Run out. I'm gonna have to use packing tape. This has happened before. Unfortunately, it's quite a common occurrence because I use so much tape. In this case, I'll just cut this in half. It's really messy, I know. It's it's horrible and I'm very sorry to the person who's going to be getting this because I usually have tape but for some reason I don't at the moment sticky labels that's what I need <laughs> like a label maker that's what I need half of it has been done with regular cellar tape and the other half has sadly been done with packing tape it looks horrible but I'm not that first, and hopefully the person's not that first because it's the contents that matters. Here's the little Mubu emblem there. And now I'm ready to go to the post office. Let's go. I am on my way to the post office, and it is very cold today over in London. Here we go, it's very, very chilly. I'm wearing my hat and my cool coat, and we are nearly at the post office. Can't see my eyes. So I just shipped it. Oh, don't need that anymore. And sent it via standard, which was around sixteen pounds. Um, yeah. So I will see you now when I get home. So that concludes my video for today. I hope you all enjoyed seeing my little journey that I take to post all my albums out. And. Hopefully I will be doing another video tomorrow. 
a lot of people want to see my setup, my vinyl setup, and I am more than happy to do that. I just need to figure out what speakers and amp I have. As I said, I got them as a gift, and they are very, very old, so I don't actually know the brand. I know that my amp is a Sony of some sort, but I'm going to do some research into my speakers. Um, and yeah, thank you all for 800 subscribers now. I've got my computer behind me, and I'm at 837 as as I'm talking to you, and I think that is my biggest growth yet. I mean, I had, I think, 600 and something at the beginning of yesterday. Like, that's crazy. Um, thank you all for the subscription. Thank you all for the support. I could not have done it without you all. This community has made me feel very welcome and a safe space to talk about the things that I love um, with being music, vinyl, prog, whatever it is, but, I don't know, I, it's been a fun kind of journey as well to, because I kind of took up this kind of YouTube thing as like a, as like a little hobby, I didn't think I'd actually upload as regularly as I do, I have been uploading daily since, I think, the 26th of December, or oh, no, I think a bit after that, because the 26th of December was my first video, and that is now no longer my most viewed video. My most viewed video is the Prog Albums video with my dad, which has nearly got 6,000 views. And I uploaded that a week ago. Like, wow. I'm so happy that people are interested in my channel and people who are interested in my business as well. Because a lot of, I've got, some of you have been buying some stuff from our store, which means a lot because a lot of this stuff is stuff that obviously you would all like it's a lot of prog we have um as i said we have a lot of prog i had a lot of the king crimson earlier albums until i got the 69 to 72 box set so i've got a lot of king crimson in there um some old kind of emo stuff and a lot of beatles and a lot of queen so if any of that is interesting to you you can have a look it's not too expensive although if you live abroad it might be a bit more expensive because of posting and shipping etc all that jazz um but yeah thank you all for watching and you can follow me on instagram at the prog nerd um yeah bye